on. Wait up. Let's move. Sam, Steve is checking Olivia. Pal, you with me. Roger. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of SWAT Episode 11 Recap and the Biggest Twist. Tan enjoyed a rare night out on SWAT. He attended a swanky gala with his new love interest. She was receiving an award. He went to support her. Tan was coming out of a painful divorce and needed some pleasure. It didn't matter if it was work for her. He simply appreciates being happy again. His relationship with Olivia was not serious. They like each other, but they both decided early on to keep things casual. As a result, Olivia's eagerness to accept a fantastic job offer was not surprising. She was overseas, so her relationship with Tan was coming to an end. Tan did not mind. He nonetheless congratulated her on the promotion. She would essentially run everything in the Middle East, and she loves it. Olivia was a war correspondent. Being stranded in La would have been too mundane for her. She needed to flee after the action. Tan was the same person, and that is why he joined SWAT. They were making love on the balcony when they heard gunshots. Some gunmen had attended the celebration. They were unable to call 911 because their phones were jammed. Tan also did not have his gun because he needed to check it in at the front desk. They were defenseless, and the gunmen appeared to be serious. The group of shooters who burst into the party wanted access to the newspaper vault. The vault could only be opened by three individuals. One was the guy who ran the newspaper. The other was the second in command, and the third was the accountant. The gunman requested that two of these people, identified by name, stand up. They wanted them to use their keys to get into the vault. Tan asked Olivia about what was in the vault. She described it as a collection of items gathered in order to tell a story. It was a repository of information. It wasn't like there would be gold or cash in there. The vault also needs to be opened by two key holders. Declan Smart did not want to play ball. He declined to enter his code to access the vault. The guy in charge did not like that, so he killed him. He then requested that the third key holder be brought down. He even requested that they bring another captive along with the key holder. Their murderer threatened to continue killing Susan's colleagues if she did not enter her code. She was obliged to do it. They gained entrance to the vault, but the bad guys did not find what they were looking for. They left frustrated. They intended to murder anyone who saw their faces, but Tan saved the day. Tan fled from the balcony. He made it around to the opposite side of the structure. He killed a few gunmen. He stole their radio and tuned it to police frequencies. Tan requested backup. He also attempted to save lives. He prevented anyone else from being hurt, but the guy in charge escaped. Olivia, the journalist, had asked the man who was paying him to do this. He said no one was paying him. Whatever he wanted had to be personal. This could indicate that he is attempting to kill a narrative by any means available. This might involve going after the journalist responsible. Unfortunately, there is no list that links stories to journalists. Declan might have had it. He is no longer alive and is unable to tell stories. Ken was the only other person who might have known about it. He was the other key holder. He received a shot in the arm. He'll make it and can answer questions. He later informed SWAT of a story that had its contents stolen from the vault. The story concerned private contractors, it's called the Bolton Defense. A man named Bolton ran the company. Bolton hired former soldiers. His gunmen, who opened fire on the party, were identified. The man in command was former Captain John Mulcahy. He works for Bolton. Olivia didn't know the whole tale, but she had heard rumors that these private contractors tend to disregard international law when deployed. One rumor suggested that they may have tortured victims for information. If it is true that they actually broke the law to accomplish their duties, they may be blacklisted from the industry and charged. Olivia saw their faces and realized that they were already facing murder accusations. They must be hiding something very nasty. They needed proof of the story. They wanted to end the story. After Hondo's house was broken into, SWAT took a minute to rally around Tan. It turned out that Bruce Martin was back. When he messed up her office at the community center, Nichelle let it go. Because he had destroyed their house and terrified her family, she couldn't let it go. She told Hondo everything. He was clearly upset. He intended to arrest Bruce. He simply didn't understand why now. Bruce should have been scared off after the final warning. Thank you for watching.